Hi, I'm Katie, and this is my tutorial for my sparkling silk wrapped pearl edging as seen on a few of my examples here. For this tutorial, you are going to need a finished ornament that's been fully finished and is ready to have an edging applied to it as seen here. You will need a non-permanent marking tool like a chalk or ceramic pencil. I have here two examples that I really like from Dritz or Bowen, but Taylor's chalk, anything that's not permanent will work. Please don't use a micron pen for reasons that will become apparent later. You'll also need a small ruler to know where to place your marking and you'll need inexpensive scissors. Silk wrapped pearl does have a wire core to it and those will nick the blades of your scissors. So you have to use something you don't mind trashing. Please don't use your good embroidery scissors for this. You'll also need some fine needles. So I recommend either a number 10 milliners or a curved beading needle for this. A number 10 milliners needle is great for a soft edge like a pillow finish, but for a hard edge, so like everything I've used here where these are laced over a padded mat board ground, a curved beading needle is your absolute best friend for finishing of any kind, whether or not it's this method or something else. You will also need fine sewing thread for your couching on your loops and your beads. I'm using 103 here. As I mentioned in my last tutorial, I really like silk because of the smoothness and the ease it adds to finishing, but plain cotton sewing thread will work too if that's what you have in your stash. You'll also need some embellishments, so crystals or beads of your choice. Today, I'm using four millimeter crystal rounds, and then you'll also need a silk wrapped pearl in the size and color of your choice. We'll be going over the options as part of this tutorial so you know what to look and buy for. Today, I'm using size super, the smallest size in this beautiful, rich, Christmassy green color. This is exclusive to Katie Strachan Artisan Embroidery. We had it done specially for the holiday. I thought it would be something fun and special. And as part of that, I do have silk wrapped pearl finishing packs up on my website, which contain everything used in this tutorial. So that would be the green crystals that coordinate with the silk wrapped pearl used here today, the needles, the number 10 milliners and the curved beading needle, and then the 103 and the silk wrapped pearl in coordinating colors. And you can use the 103 to stitch your ornament, not just to finish it. So I stitched the ornament I'm demonstrating with today with the 103 that's included in the finishing pack and that I am also using to do the finishing on my ornament as well. So it can pull double duty. How much edging you get out of a single kit or a box of silk wrap pearl that you've bought or have from stash depends on how long your loops are and how you space them. How to calculate that is going to be covered in the tutorial and there are formulas for that in the description as well. But if you use the method exactly as demonstrated in this tutorial, which will be for a single loop edging, you'll get 20 and a quarter inches of edging out of a single finishing pack. And that's plenty for a small ornament or two, but for a larger pillow finish, you may need another pack. Or if you want to do a double scallop using the same pearl as seen here, where both the inner and outer loops are worked with this size super pearl, you will need an extra box of silk wrapped pearl. Please contact me immediately after placing your order if you want to add some extra of this color to your order. And then I will restock the finishing packs if it turns out that there's more demand than I had anticipated. We will start today by covering the basics of silk wrapped pearl. 
but I'll put the timestamp in the description for when the step-by-step -step instruction starts if you'd like to skip ahead directly to that. And what we'll be covering are the types, handling, and handling of silk wrap pearl, as well as possible variations on the technique. I have done quite a lot of examples in preparation for this tutorial. So I have a variety of suggestions for you. I think this is a really versatile technique with just endless possibilities. So Wrap Pearl is a really unique and just wonderful thread because it gives so much texture with so little effort. You just have to cut it and thread it on a needle pretty much. Silk wrapped pearl, as the name would suggest, is a silk wrapped wire that has then been tightly coiled. And in short lengths, it actually looks a little bit like a bullion knot, but without all of the annoyance of actually stitching a bullion knot. If you've ever done it, you know what I mean by that. I can't stand them. Silk wrap pearl is most commonly used in surface embroidery in a variety of methods. It can be couched down, either stretched or unstretched. So I've done that here on the lid of my Gloriana box for the stems and leaf detailing. This is all silk wrapped pearl. And then I have stretched and couched it down here for the stems on the side of the box as well. It can, however, also be coiled, looped, and stitched down exactly as we're doing in the tutorial today. The method is very much the same. So these are some examples from my own embroidery and it can be used quite densely or just as a little bit of accent and it really is the most wonderful thread. However, I think that it's been overlooked in cross stitch because it can make for such a lovely detailed but really quite easy edging treatment for cross stitch finishes as something quite unusual in which the thread really does the work for you. You don't really need skill to do this. And silk wrap pearl, besides the basic silk wrapped pearl that you're seeing here, comes in some extra variations. Thistle Threads has been manipulating the thread and selling it. So here it's been stretched and then, there we go. It's been stretched and then flattened. This is called silk laid down trim. Here, Trisha's done the same stretch and flatten, but then filled it with a gilt flatworm for that beautiful shine. So that's called gilt lined laid down trim. And then in this, it's been more aggressively stretched before it's been flattened to form a silk scallop. So these are all available from Thistle Threads and I'll link that in the description, but that's all silk wrapped pearl. It's just been manipulated after the fact. Silk wrap pearl also comes in a very wide color range. As we'll see here, I'm gonna show you my own personal stash. So not everything in this tray is actually silk wrapped pearl. I've also got some facet gimp, which would also make for a great edging thread. You could just stitch this down at the edge. But this section here is all silk wrapped pearl in a variety of colors from the Cabinet of Curiosities historic color range. So it pretty much comes in every color of the rainbow and in a variety of sizes, which is what we'll cover next. So these are some examples from Katie's Greens. And the smallest size available is Super. That's the size that I will be using today. It is really, really fine and oh, just lovely. It gives you this very, very detailed look that is very fine. So you will, in thinking about what size to use, 
want to scale your edging to your finish. So if you're looking at a larger pillow finish, so like I think that this would look amazing with Stacey Nash Deck the Halls Pinky, for example, you might want to use a larger size so that it's scaled to your finish. But for small ornaments, as I have here, for my inner row of scallops, I've used a size super. And then for both rows of scallops here, I have also used the finest size super. So this is the size and color I'm demonstrating with today. Size two is an intermediate size. It's what I most commonly use in surface embroidery, but it is just a little thicker than super. So it's very, very versatile in size, although it is actually the one that I haven't tried out yet in my examples on this specific technique, hilariously enough, even though it's the size that I use most commonly in my embroidery. And then the largest is size four, which is the thickest of the ones available, and it's got a little more body to it because the wire is so tightly coiled and it's thicker and then it can give a more dramatic edge to your finish so stuff likes to go all over the place which is why i try and keep it coiled and in the box so size four is what i have used for the back row of my scallops here again these are both katie's greens used with crystal color aronite if you have those in your stash and so the effect of the really delicate inner super pearl with the larger, thicker loops of the size four on the outside makes for this really cool finish that I just love. I think that, oh my gosh, does that look amazing or what? I am going to have to do more of this specific variation because I was just so pleased with how it turns out. And so for a double scallop finish, combining different sizes such as two and four or super and two or super and four as I've done here can be very effective because it highlights the differences in the scallops. So here I used size super for both just to see how it would look. And while I think this is a beautiful edging, it's not as dramatic as the one where I've used super and four. So size super comes in a shorter 18 inch length uh, because it's so difficult to make. Silk wrapped pearl is a relatively expensive thread because it's so labor intensive to manufacture. Sizes two and four come in a one yard or one meter length. Silk wrap pearl is not widely stocked, although any LNS can order it for you as a special order. The retailers that I know of that stock it are Needle in a Haystack, Knotted Needle, and Thistle Threads in the United States, as well as Traditional Stitches in Canada. I'll update the description with additional sources if it turns out I'm missing someone. Needle in a Haystack does have pictures of most of the pearl colors on their website. I'll link that too, so you can see what you would want or need. Most of the numbers come from the Dalje color line, um, just so you know what they refer to, although they frequently have the size in front of them. So this is size four. The Dalje number of the silk color is 633, and then the four at the front denotes the size. So if you were looking at, for the silk that corresponded to this, you'd be looking for a Dalje 633. And the method for using all of the different sizes of pearls is exactly the same, although you may want to vary your cut lengths according to the scale of the thread, although that's a matter of personal taste. So here for the longer, or sorry, so for the larger size for, I've used a larger cut length and I will detail as part of the tutorial what exactly I did for each of these variations so that you can copy them exactly. And then I've scaled my cuts down for the smaller size super. 
Here again, I have got small cuts because the thread's small and it hugs the beads with this. And then the effect that you can get with your silk wrap pearl looped finishing depends on what size you use how long your loop is and whether it's a tighter loop or a longer scallop and how you space your loops. So here on my double scallop, I've used the same size of loop and bead as on the inner row of scallops on this finish, but I've spaced them more closely together and I have used a smaller, tighter backing scallop, which gives you two different effects, even though the base technique is the same. This is also a double scallop, and this is with metal pearls, which we'll talk about in just a second. They're all shorter lengths, finer thread, and then that gives you this lacy, very delicate look. Although I have to admit, I actually don't like this as much as the kind of bolder look, which I feel really accents the quality of the pearl. This is what I'm calling a single scallop. So I have used size super here in short cut lengths, but um, they're over a longer stitch length. So that kind of draws it out into a scallop as opposed to a tight loop. And then this is what I call a single loop finish. So here I've used size four in a very short cut length so that it's essentially backing the beads which sent in front of the loops as opposed to the technique I'll use today where I've got the silk wrap pearl hugging the loops. So what I'll be demonstrating on today is basically this but without the backing scallop, although I will tell you how to do that. And then the particulars on each finish as seen here are going to be listed in the description and I will go over them at the end after I demonstrate the basic method so that the details on each of those make sense. This tutorial does focus on silk wrapped pearl because it's my personal favorite. However, you can also use metal pearls as I have done here to coordinate with the bijou that I stitched this motif with. These are synthetic rather than the real gold pearls, which looked a little harsh against the pale gold bijou. If you've never worked with pearls before, I do really recommend starting with silk wrapped pearl because it's much more forgiving. If you damage the thread, you can nudge it back into place and repair it. That is very much not the case with metal pearls, which are not at all forgiving. So these are some examples of metal pearls, both real and synthetic from my own stash. So these are the synthetics that I use in this finish here. They're from an Etsy seller that's no longer active. I bought them many years ago. Synthetics are usually made in India and Pakistan. The quality is usually lower. So the coloration on this pearl, I'm not sure if you can see it, is not even. And then the coiling of the pearl is also not perfectly even too. That tends to be what you get with um, Indian and Pakistani producers of pearl, although they do make many wonderful threads. The gilt ones, so this is made by Benton and Johnson in England. This is a real metal pearl that's made with actual gold, although a relatively low percentage of it. And so it has this really rich and intense color. You can see why it didn't really work with the bijou, which is why I didn't use it because it's usually my first choice. The real stuff, believe it or not, is actually much easier to work with than synthetics. So this is called a check pearl in which the wire has been coiled around a shaped form that gives it that super sparkly finish. If you're going to work with metal pearls and you're not experienced with gold work, start with check. It's definitely more forgiving than a smooth or rough pearl. The other option you could add to a finish such as this is a thread called miliary. So this is a just kind of lovely edging and it can be laid 
in front of a finish and stitch down to add some extra detail. So these are just a few things about gilt pearls, although it's really not the subject of this tutorial. So for your piece today, as I'm demonstrating here, you will also need beads. So I tried the gilt partly because I thought that this would work well without beads. And while you can certainly just loop and stitch down your pearls in like this lovely lacy edging, I admit that I like it best with the dimension and the sparkle that the beads add to this finish. It's just a little bit of extra sparkly something. I'm waving this around because I'm hoping it'll catch catch the light and you can see a little bit of what that adds to it. So I've used four millimeter crystal rounds for all of the different examples that I have shown you. And that's because I love crystals. They come in a wide color range. It's really easy to match them to any color of silk wrap pearl that you might have. But any bead of your choosing would work equally well. Varying the size and type of bead could add another variation to this technique that could give you a completely different effect. And that can be really cool. One possible alternative would be crystal pearls. They are less expensive than regular crystals. They come in a wide variety of colors and sizes. I will note that the holes on these are really, really fine. So you need a very fine needle, like a number 10 millimeters or a 13 beading to work with these. And I'll link sources in the description. And then with that, let's get to the actual instruction on this technique. Let me clear everything away here. And now let's start on making the actual edging. You're going to want to start your edging at the bottom or the sides, not right at the top. That may seem counterintuitive, but the thing is your decided spacing of your loops may not correspond perfectly to the actual circumference of your piece. And then you need to start fudging it as you get back around. And it's much better to do that in a place where it's less visible because it's easier to lengthen the space between the loops than to cram too many short loops into a smaller space. Here I started at the top and you can see that this side isn't Quite as even as this side it's a little more visible that's why i recommend studying, starting at the bottom or like the bottom side the thing is once this is hanging on an ornament or sitting on your shelf or displayed in your dough bowl you're not really going to notice but it just makes life a little easier and less stressful if you start there and then you can also plan out your placement which is what i did on this ornament because it's so tiny there really wasn't much room to fudge it so what i did was i laid it out on a piece of paper i drew in the length of the edge and then i planned my spacing so on this one i wanted to try a tighter spacing than what i'm going to demonstrate today with equal quarter inches between quarter inch loops. So when I drew that out, I found that it gave this staggered edge, which of course would meet up if you placed it correctly, but I thought it might not look as good as evenly spacing it along one edge. So there I was able to better plan how to space my loops. I don't do this on most ornaments, but here because it was a square that was perfectly symmetrical and so small, I decided to plan out my spacing in advance. And on that instance, I was glad that I did. However, today we are not going to be doing that and I'm just going to start, go along and we'll see how we do. Well, color me doubly embarrassed because I found when I went back to review the footage of 
doing the instruction on the silk wrap pearl, <laughs> a great deal of footage was missing and I have now failed to record the starting of the thread twice. So I'm afraid this tutorial will be a little choppy in terms of the actual video, but I hope we'll get there in the end. So I'm going to demonstrate again now for the third time starting your thread. So I like to start my thread with a straight number 10 milliners needle before stitch switching to the curved beading needle to do the actual edging itself. So I'm just gonna demonstrate on a really short length of silk so that this actually makes it into the finished tutorial and I really hope this is recording right now. So I have threaded my 103 on my number 10 milliners needle and because this is a fully finished ornament you need to bury your thread end so that means you kind of want to just slip this in in between um, one of your slip stitches or your seam or however you finished it and bury your knot and then you are going to come up we're going to pretend that that's my marked starting point for my first loop, which was actually here. And then you're just going to pull that through and then just give it a yank and pop that knot so that that's totally buried and you cannot see that thread end at all. However, to make sure that you don't then pop the knot through your linen, you're going to take an additional single tacking stitch. And so what you want to do there is pick up just one linen thread and pull that through. Now that gives you a really firm anchor. You can pull on that as much as you want and it will not pop loose. So that would be how I start my thread. And then now I will take you back to the segment on actually making the silk wrapped pearl loops. So now that I've shown you how to start your thread, you would then switch to a curved beading needle as I have threaded here. If you're working with a hard edged piece as I'm doing, you can use a number 10 for a number 10 milliners needle for a soft edged piece. This can be just a touch thick for size super which is super pearl, which is another reason I really like these curved beading needles. They are fine enough for even the finest pearls. So the first thing you need to do is cut your pearl for your loops. So for the technique I'm demonstrating today, I have decided on half inch cuts of size super pearl. So I've placed the top of my pearl at the half inch mark of my ruler. I'm pinching that to hold it in position and then I'm just going to cut right at the base of the ruler and that gives me a half inch. Silk wrap pearl does have the tendency to ravel just a little bit so you can always go in with your scissors and clean up those little bits of fluff if they bother you to get a neater edge. So this does tend to happen um, with your raw edges in the box and then you can just clip them off and be rid of them. So once I have cut my first half inch length, I actually find it a lot easier to just measure against the pearl itself. Sorry, that got a little bent out of place. So this is why I like silk wrapped pearl so much. It can be really easily manipulated. If something gets a little bent, you can just push it back into position, which you very definitely cannot do with metal pearls. So pinch these together, holding them even at the top. I realize you can't see that because my fingers are holding them, but I've got tops laid perfectly against each other. So I'm getting cuts of equal size and then I just cut right at the base and then that gives me 
equal cuts. I find that easier than using the ruler to just measure off my master cut of pearl, basically. So that's it. That's all you have to do. I have some pre-cut pieces here from the last time I demonstrated this. And now I will show you the edging. So these are a half inch piece of pearl and then the loop itself is has a quarter inch between where you bring it up and where you put it down. So I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch That's the point where I will bring the end of this loop down. And then I'm going to mark an extra 5 sixteenths of an inch. And that will be the space between the loops. That doesn't really sound very different than an equal quarter inch spacing. But for some reason, I find that it really does make a difference. It just makes the spacing look so much nicer. A perfectly even spacing is certainly easier to mark because then you can just go quarter inch all the way around, but I find that extra small little detail does really add to the finish. So I've marked my first places and now I'm going to, we're going to pretend that I'm starting and I haven't already tried and failed at this once and I am going to thread on my first length of pearl on to my beading needle and you just push it over it. Sometimes the super can be a little small so if that's the case don't be shy just shove it right over it can take it it is really tough stuff you actually need to take more care with your needle than with your thread the curved beading needle is quite fine and it's got some flex to it but push it hard enough and it will snap so take more care with your needle and then i find it easier to pull the pearl off the base just a little bit so that when you're coming back up you don't risk catching your pearl so pull that back and out of sight and then i'm going to come in at my down point but i'm not going to come up five sixteenths um, of an inch down where the next loop will start i'm going to come up just inside my starting point because I want to sew my bead on as I form each loop. I have tried this both ways and I have found that it is much, much easier to add the bead as you make each loop. So there I have come up just inside where I have started this loop and now I'm gonna pull my thread through forms my first loop yeah, and you just tug it into place it'll be fine now I'm going to thread on a bead so I've got one of my crystal four millimeter rounds and then I'm going to take my thread down just inside the other end of my scallop and then come back up at my marked spot, which is 5 sixteenths of an inch away from the edge of this loop. So I like to mark as I go, that way I don't lose track of the uneven spacing. But if you are working with a metal pearl, for example, where that can get really easily damaged by too much handling, you need to pre-mark everything before you start. The silk wrapped pearl can actually take being you know, turned on its edge and squished while you make your markings, but a metal pearl can much more easily be damaged. So today I'm just going to be marking every loop as I go, although as I said, you can pre-mark. So I am marking a quarter inch, that's for my loop, and then I'm going to add 5 sixteenths of an inch to begin my next place. And then just for ease of demonstration, I'm gonna mark two more. So when you're working with a curved 
ornament and a straight ruler. It doesn't really like to hug, hug that edge, so just do your best. It is one reason why I like using these more flexible plastic rulers because you can kind of get it to curve around your ornament. It You'll always get more even results if both your markings and your cuts are perfectly even, but really this is very forgiving, so don't stress too much about it. And we're just gonna repeat the process here of threading on that pre-cut half inch length. So you don't need to keep track of this. The formulas for all of the different finishes that I have shown in my different examples I will detail at the end. No, I don't need my bead. What am I doing? I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. That's what I'm doing. We'll be list, we'll, I'll go over them at the end and then I will list the formulas in the description for you to refer back to. You don't need to keep track of this as you go. I've got it all written out for you. So I've pulled my pearl off the base just to leave myself a clear spot to maneuver and then I'm taking it down at the quarter inch mark, and then I'm coming back up just inside the start of my loop. And I'm just gonna pull it tight. Another reason to use silk actually is that it can take all of the tugging, doesn't mind it at all. And then silk wrap pearl, as I said, it's got a wire inside it, so that means that you can manipulate these loops as much as you want, you can just kind of Squeeze them, move them around, make sure that they're hugging the bead. So I've got my loop on. And now I am threading on my bead. And then I am going to come down just inside. And then of course, this doesn't want to do this on camera. I'm trying to hit that next mark. Sometimes you do need to wiggle your needle just a little bit to get it to come up where you want it to. But the curved needle you will find is so much easier for a hard edge than a straight. All right, so Adding on my loop and try and make sure that you're actually getting through the center and not catching. So if it's not moving smoothly like this, then you've probably caught some of the silk wrapping. You're not actually going through the center of the pearl itself. In that case, just pull it off your needle and try again. This can take a lot of handling. So. I have threaded that on. So there, I didn't have quite a clean cut at one end, and what happened was my needle was catching that as I was threading it on. That's why it was a little re resistant. So you can watch for that. So thread on, pull up. Come up inside the start of my loop. Pull my loop tight. Add on my bead. Come down inside the loop. So you don't want to be digging into the edge of this ornament, just kind of skimming. The edge of it, it makes it, your needle much more easy to maneuver. I want to just hit that. Spot. So 
So I am going to pause this. I'm going to make, well, I hope I'm going to pause this. I'm going to check that it was in fact recording. And then I will come back to you towards the end and show you how I either fudge it or end my ornament. Okay, so I have now worked my way around to, and I'm going to get very close to the end. So when I get to maybe like the last third of uh, an edging, I start to measure and mark further out in advance so I can see how things are going to line up because it's easier to put a little extra space between say like those last four loops rather than have a big gap right at the end. Here I have found that it's actually very, very close. So instead of a uh, Five eighths, uh, five sixteenths. I was going to have an extra one eighth of an inch, which is really easy to fudge. So I just moved that last loop over just a tiny little bit, and then I'll have a little extra space on each side here. But I think that's going to look fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put that last loop in. But so as you get closer to bringing your edge around, just remember to plan out for how you're going to space those last loops if you need to adjust the spacing at all. And that is, again, another reason why you're using a semi-permanent form to mark. For one thing, anything that you put on it will disappear over time, but it also means that if you need to adjust your spacing, you're not left with a permanent mark on your fabric. I don't really ever recommend using Micron Pen for everything, which I know is kind of an unpopular take, but I think it's just always better not to have something you can't change on your finish, no matter what kind of stitching you're doing. So I am putting my last loop on, and I am sorry for the shadows in the video. I usually get such good light in here, and yet on the day I've set aside to film, <laughs> it's quite overcast and dark here. So I'm also, I think, going to lengthen this loop just a little bit to help even the spacing out a little bit. So I'm going just a little longer than that marked quarter of an inch. Coming up inside. And yeah, that's gonna look pretty even. It's not actually perfectly even, but no one will be able to tell once it's on a tree. So I'm going to thread on my final bead. And then if I were Finishing this, I would take it to the back. However, I am going to take this up behind my loop so I can quickly demonstrate for you how a double scallop would work. So I want to come up behind it. So I'm going to take my needle down where I usually would. Why is this always harder on camera? And I'm going to come up a little past the center of that bead. Not my thread on the way in. Twice. Okay. So I've pulled that through, and as this loop is a little longer, I'm just going to nudge that into place. Yeah. Looks great. I could have lengthened the space between the preceding uh, loops to make that a little more even, but I really, yeah, I don't want to. I'm lazy. I think that's going to be fine. So now to demonstrate a double scallop. So I've got my thread here just to the side of the center. And the double scallop varies on how long you want that second scallop to be and just basically what you're doing. We'll go through the different variations at the very end of this tutorial, but I'm going to thread on a 7 8 inch length of a size 4 purl. So basically exactly what I did for this finish here. And for 
this, you just go ahead and use your previous loops as your guide. So you take the needle down just, so if you've got a four millimeter bead, that is a perfect guide. So at the side of the bead is where you take the needle down to close the scallop. And then the other side of the bead, just behind it, is where you bring it up to start the next scallop. And then you pull that loop tight. So you're always working the double scallop with the second row sitting just behind the first. And then you would go ahead and put your remaining scallops in, staggering them in between your existing loops. That's how you get that double lacy effect. So we'll go through the variations in more detail, but I'm going to remove this and then come back and show you how to actually finish off your thread. Okay, I lied. So I looked at what I had done and I was like, you know what, Kitty, don't be lazy. So I pulled off my preceding three loops, spaced them just a little bit wider apart. So right there, I hope you can see that was my original mark. And then that's where I moved it over to. And then just changing those three last loops made the spacing much more even. And what I did there was I just pulled off what I had done. And then with one exception, reused the silk wrap pearl. I didn't use this one because I wanted to show you what it looks like after it's been stitched and pulled off so it can be used again. There's nothing wrong with this at all. I was able to easily reuse my previous cut lengths of silk wrapped pearl. So now I have threaded on my last bead. I've taken the needle down as I would for any loop, well, putting the bead in, and then I have taken it just to the side here where it meets the silk. I'm going to show you how to end this off and this would be true whether you're doing a single scallop or a double scallop. Oh, okay. Good example of silk wrap pearl. So here, these got a little squished while I was shoving it down into the table to mark all of my things. And now I'm just going to pinch them back into place. Make sure they're hugging those beads. And oh, looks all better. Seriously, silk wrap pearl is magic stuff. I know I sound like a lunatic right now, but it really is a very special thread and I'm very fond of it. So I am going to end my thread by just taking little tiny tacking stitches between the front and the back as if I were just stitching this ornament closed during finishing. You can also bury tacking stitches around the base of your silk wrapped pearl. I am just taking this up and down wherever my needle wants to take me because I am a little ready to be done with this ornament, but you can there. So I've managed to get that up close to the base of my silk wrapped pearl. And I could just pick up a single linen thread because the thing is, you're not trying to hold this ornament together at this point. You're just trying to secure your thread end. So all you need are just a couple of tacking stitches in there to secure everything before you cut this off. So I'm going to take one more. And then I'm going to try and slide this out to the back. It's just a little easier said than done. Close enough, that works, okay. And I'm trying not to catch any of my loops. I mess them up while I'm at it. So I pulled that and then I'm going to take an actual pair of embroidery scissors at this point because I wanna get as close to the fabric as possible. Clip right at the base and now it is invisible. So that is the Silk wrapped pearl 
single loop edging and now we are going to go through some of the variations and the specifications on how you make them. Okay, so for the details of each of these variations, and then of course they will also be written out in the description for you to refer back to. So for our single loop as demonstrated, I have one half inch cuts of size super pearl, the stitch, the length of the loop. So when I say the length of the loop, I mean the distance between going up and down, just so that we're all on the same page on terminology. So my descriptions of this make sense. Loop length is one quarter of an inch, and then I've got five, sixteen, five sixteenths of an inch between loops. For the double scallop shown here, and as I mentioned, this was done with Katie's greens, and I will suggest crystal pairings for each of those because many of you do already have green silk wrap pearls out there that would be great to use with this finishing style. I have done the same inner loops. So again, that's the half inch cut length with super spaced five inch, sixteenths inch apart and with a one quarter inch loop length and then I have stitched the double scallop as demonstrated by staggering the second row of scallops behind the first starting a scallop at the size side of the bead ending the scallop at the side of the next bead so here you don't measure you just use your preceding row of loops as your marks and then I have used a seven eighths cut length of size four pearl for my second row of scallops. For my smaller double scallops using all of this beautiful bright green silk wrapped pearl, I have a five eighths cut, cut length. So silk wrapped pearl, you'll almost always want a cut length between three eighths of an inch and seven eighths of an inch, which is pretty small and not that much variation you would think, but those little eighth of an inch differences do actually make a huge difference in how your loops look. So I've got a five eighths of an inch cut length size super, and that's done the same way where I start each loop at the side of one of the beads, take it down at the side of the next bead, so five eighths inch cut length for the second double scallop. And then for my first go at a single loop, I did a three quarter of an inch cut length of size four pearl. You can see if you loop pearl too tightly, it gets this stretched look at the top. That's one of the reasons I like super so much. It can hug a bead quite tightly and still look very even. So this is a 3 8 inch cut length. It is a 1 quarter inch loop length and then they are spaced 5 16 inch um, apart just like my finish here. So this is the same. It's just a larger size of pearl with a shorter loop length. And so for this, I've really got the bead sitting in front of the loop instead of hugging, well, sorry, the pearl hugging the bead inside the loop. So that's a case where the pearl dictated a slightly different finish. This was also my first try at this technique and I was still kind of working out what did I like and what looked best. As you can see, I did quite a lot of variations to try and really give you a good look at what you can do with this technique. But honestly, I have only scratch the surface here and I think there's so much more that you can do with this. I hope you do experiment with this technique and that you share with me all of the different things you come up with. Tag me at kstracken embroidery on Instagram or you can send me pictures using the contact form on my website. This is what I like to call the single scallop 
And for this, I have used a half inch cut length of size Super Pearl. So that's the exact same cut length and pearl size as seen here on the single loop finish, but I've stitched it down over a longer 5 sixteenths of an inch length as opposed to the quarter inch. And that extra little bit just stretches it out into more of that looped scallop look as opposed to the tighter loop hugging the beads here. And then the loops are spaced three eighths. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. There's a an eighth of an inch between the loops. And there I have placed a single crystal round. That is a really tiny little three millimeter round to fill the space between the loops. So that's what I call the single scallop finish. And again, the formulas or recipes for all of these are going to be written in the description. So excuse my verbal flub there. And then the last one is my metal pearl finish. And then we're going to talk about how you calculate what you need for each of these finishes. So the double metal, metal, the double scallop using metal pearls without beads uses a three eighths of an inch cut of smooth pearl that's stitched down over a quarter inch length. So the same um, loop length as the single loop finish here. And then those are spaced an even quarter of an inch apart for the first row. Behind it, I've used a check pearl in a 5 eighths of an inch cut length. And this scallop is done the exact same way as the other double scallops, only I've gone just a little bit off center because I didn't have the bead to use as a marking. So it's the same staggered double scallop where you use the placement of your first row to mark the placement of the second. Now, you need to know how much pearl do you need when you are thinking about um, doing this finish so you know what to buy essentially. And the first thing is what sizes are you going to use because they come in different lengths. Super comes in an 18 inch length, two and four are one yard each. So you need to know essentially how much you're going to get out of each box when you're doing your calculations. And for that, you need to know what you get out of it. So that would be essentially, you wanna know your total edge or circumference of whatever it is you're using. And then that would be the loop. To calculate this, you need the, sorry, the loop length, so that's how much you're taking up on your edge, and then the space between loops. So if I had a quarter of an inch and they're spaced a quarter of an inch apart, just to make this easy, although that's obviously clearly out of scale, then I get a total length of half an inch for each cut. And then basically that's how you would do it for any of these variations. You add up space between and then the vertical length of one cut and then that's the length that a single cut gets you. So if that's a half inch cut, then that's a very easy half an inch of pearl gets me half an inch of edge. And then that would be 36 inches of an edge for what I've used here with the single loop, I calculated that you would get 20 and a quarter inches out of an 18 inch box of size super pearl or double that if you're using size two or size four. So that brings me to the conclusion of the silk wrapped pearl looped edging tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it made sense. There's been a lot of start stop and you will find the summaries of everything we discussed in the description as a handy reference guide since I know the tutorial is 
quite wordy. This is a really special, sparkling, and beautiful finish, so I hope you'll give it a try. It's a lovely way to add a very detailed and unusual and lightly sparkly edge to any kind of finish. So I've done these all pretty much in tonal stitches with very similar types of edging, but I really think that you can bring yourself to this and do all kinds of amazing combinations with contrast edges or different types of beads. Bring your own creativity to it and I am sure you will come up with all kinds of amazing things. I'll see you again soon for my next floss tube. Thanks for following along with me today and until then, happy stitching.